The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash the mom hour. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the mom hour. Hey everyone, Megan here, and this is another special bonus episode of the Mom Hour, where Sarah or I, not usually together, um, interview someone in the parenting world that we admire. So it might be an author or a blogger or someone else that um, whose work we admire and whose message we want to get out to everyone. And so today I am talking with Rachel Macy Stafford. She is the blogger behind Hands Free Mama and the author of the new book, Only Love Today. Um, Rachel. Rachel's story is great, and since she started writing about her journey to becoming a more present and engaged mom, wife, woman, friend, everything, um, her career really blew up because the message was just so relatable to so many people, and her books are fantastic. Her other two books are called Hands Free Mama and Hands Free Life, and I'm really excited to talk to her today about Only Love Today, which just launched the other day. So without further ado, here is my interview with Rachel Macy Stafford. Rachel, I'm so glad to have you on the show. Hi, Megan. It's good to be here. Okay, so I had to look up when the last time was that we spoke, and this is shameful. (laughs) When (laughs) was it? January of 2014. Oh, that's too long. (laughs) I think... I think Hands Free Life had just come out, maybe. Does that yeah. sound right? This is yes. making me start to feel old because we've known each other a long time. Oh, my gosh. We, <laughs> I've known you before I even thought about writing a book. And yeah. you you inspired me because I started reading your blog. And I was oh like, my goodness. oh, look at her. Yeah. So, so yeah, we go way back and... Um, and, and I just love, I've, I've watched how you've evolved, which is fun. And then I've written now, this is my yeah. third book. So, wow, so yes. we're doing pretty good. Yeah, we're doing pretty good for ourselves. We're like internet old timers, but, um, <laughs> but we're still we're hanging in there, up. right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it changes every day too. And now they're making me do videos. And yeah. so I'm like, Hey, oh gosh. Yeah. I would do that as well. It'll, I signed up for writing, not videos. <laughs> it'll be okay. <laughs> so today, so your third book is out and I want to talk about that today. And the book is called only love today reminders to breathe more stress less and choose love which is a great title thank you um now if someone is brand new to your work um and i want to just mention that the last time we spoke was an episode of the home hour podcast it was episode 17 so if anyone wants to hear that sort of as some background and to hear more about hands-free life which is your second book correct mm-hmm. your second book yes um, yes just go to the homehour.com and find episode 17 but uh today i really want to focus on only love today which is your new book i would love if you you can give a little bit of the background of how you sort of started this internet writing journey in the first place. You had a very specific message, I feel like, from day one that I was aware of your work. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's really spoken to people. And I'm wondering if you can share a little bit about that backstory before we kind of dig into the new book. Sure, sure. Well, I, I started my blogging journey really to hold my own self accountable because I had gotten to a place in my life where I was really no longer living. I was merely surviving. Mm. Um, I had just completely filled every space in my life, in my calendar with stuff. Mm. And I was very much addicted to my phone. Um, you know, I felt like I had to respond immediately. I was doing way too many things, pretty much anything anyone asked of me in the community. Um, I was taking several classes. Um, and I had just become that person who was like, I can't right now. I'm too busy. You know, I was saying no to all the important things and saying yes to the urgent things that weren't important. And so when it, hit me one day when I was out on a run, the question that came to my mind 
that was such a compliment all the time was, oh, how do you do it all, Rachel? And I was like, you know, what is the real answer to that question? And the answer was, I do it all because I miss out on life. Mm. And what I'm missing, I am not going to get back. And my kids were, were young at the time, six and three. And it, it was a really painful realization when I finally let myself go there that I was missing the important things. And so as much as it seems weird to say, oh, then I started a blog (laughs) because I'm trying to let go of my distractions. But I had had so many people tell me because of my writing, you need to start a blog. And, And that was when blogs were just kind of, you know, catching on. Yeah. And I thought, you know, okay, I don't know anything about technology, but this is a great way to stay accountable because I thought if I'm putting it out there, I'm going to, you know, hopefully gain a few readers who, and, and then I won't be doing this by myself. And what would amazed me because I was very nervous when I posted my first couple entries, because I was like, I'm just going to be honest because, you know, I, I'm really struggling here and I want to be authentic. And so I was admitting, you know, that I was definitely not perfect even though it appeared on the outside that that I had it all together and I was really struggling and I wanted to get off the hamster wheel and I couldn't believe how many of my neighbors wrote me behind the scenes and were like, Rachel, I read your blog and I want to do what you're doing. Let's do this together. And that was all I needed to hear was, okay, you know, this, there's something to be said for sharing your struggles and not plastering on a smile, which I had done for so many years. And so that's how that all started because I was very um, fueled by the fact that other people were responding. And not only that, but at my house, in my own home, when I started to become available, my kids and my husband sensed it right away. And, And they were like, oh, wow, like, mom's, you know, actually sitting here on the couch with us. She's not looking at her phone. She's not busying herself with other things. And, you know, cause that's what I did. I multitasked my life away. I was constantly doing three things at once and they started responding and I didn't tell them because I was so afraid I wasn't going to be able to let go of my distractions. I didn't tell anybody what I was doing for three months because I started the blog about five months into my journey, but for three months I didn't tell anyone. And one day when I told my husband, I said, I'm working on this thing. I'm trying to be hands free. And he went to the museum with the girls that day and he came home and he said, I couldn't stop thinking about what you're working on. And, and he said, it's funny because I've noticed something different about you but I couldn't put my finger on it. But he said, I started thinking about this hands-free concept. And he said, I didn't get my phone out once at the museum. And he goes, and I can't remember the last time I had so much fun with the girls. And so again, I was like, okay, I think I'm on to something (laughs) here. You know, if my husband, my friends, you know, so I was like, I got to do this. I think this is what I'm supposed to do. We are welcoming our longtime sponsor, Prep Dish, back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all Prep Dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time, and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this. Slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash the mom hour. 
Again, that's prepdish.com slash the mom hour for a month's worth of the new prep dish protein boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Wow. And you know, one thing that when you were talking about that, um, that transition is that it takes some time to sort of rewire your brain. Yeah. So can you tell me like what was going on in your body, in your mind? Was there, were there points where your brain was screaming out like, just give me a text message or something while you were trying to, because that's, I think that's the hardest part to think about that disconnect. Um, You you can see what's on the other side and how good and peaceful and calming that could be, but like getting from here to there. Right. Well, the secret for me was starting small okay. <laughs> because I could not really, I don't know. I, I probably couldn't go a minute or two without checking my phone or I would jump when I heard the notification. And, um, so what I had to do is start small. So I started with 10 minutes, which okay. might sound long to some people, but to me, I knew that if I designated a 10 minute period of time where I would put away my phone. I had to get it out of sight. So I turned off the notifications. I put it in a drawer. I put away the laptop. I put away the to-do list because I was a master at writing just long, crazy to-do list. So put that away. Um, I also had to put away the guilt and the the resentment, you know, like I, I had to put away, I just kind of just envisioned myself just taking it all off and saying, I am here in this moment and I'm going to see what happens. And so I would put it all away. I would actually have to set the microwave timer for 10 minutes. I was like, I'm not going to look at anything, you know, technology wise. I'm just going to be here. And the very first time that I did it, I sat next to Avery on the couch and she was watching The Lion King And she scooted right up next to me like a magnet. And she picked up my hand and she kissed my palm. Mm. That was the very first 10 minute increment that I had of being hands free. And I thought it was free. Your palm was available. Yeah. And I and I thought so from that from that experience, I realized no matter how much she wants to or would like to or needs to, my child cannot kiss a moving target. Mm. And then I would, sub, you know, substitute my husband into that sentence or my parents. Like, they, my family can't reach me if I am constantly busy doing or my mind is somewhere else. And so I would designate 10-minute t- periods. I started with in the morning was a 10-minute period when they came home from school was another one. Dinner time was another one. And then bedtime. And it's funny because those 10 minute hands free increments, granted, they grew. Um, but that's where I started. And I still to this day, six years later, those are still protected times. My girls know my husband knows In the morning, I do not pick up my phone. I wait until I've greeted everyone, you know, we've hugged or I've done some kind of self-care or I've, um, you know, read my Bible, done something to fill my cup. Um, And then 
when, when I greet them, I, I just think it's so important to look into people's eyes when you greet them and you see them, even if they're just walking in the room from another room. Um, I had a mom who, when I shared about um, the sun delay, I call it. So like in Florida, we used to live where they would say, oh, um, watch out this morning. Traffic's bad because of the sun delay. Well, it means there's so much sun it's blinding. Yeah. And I thought I want to greet my family with so much love and so much yeah. happiness to see them that it's that it's like their world stops for a moment. Mm. And just to let them feel my love. And I shared that on a blog post and a mother wrote to me and she said, I had gotten so disconnected with my teenage son and we weren't talking. And she said, I decided to try the sun delay. And she said, three days, three days was all it took of me being so conscientious about greeting him every time he walked in the room and looking happy to see him. And she said three days and he said, I love you, mom. And she hadn't heard it in months. And so I do think there is a, a, a power in having that connection when you greet them, when you say goodbye. And so many times we're on the phone, we're thinking about what's on our daily agenda. And, and I, I tell people, you know, if you can only do one thing and that is just when you say goodbye and you depart for the day, just hold on to that person for 10 to 20 seconds, just to hold on that 10 seconds, that 20 seconds is not going to break your schedule, but right. it is going to make a difference in how they feel when they go out into the world and you don't know who they're going to encounter. There's so much negativity right now mm -hmm. and you can be the person who starts them off with something positive just by being available. Like we're just, we're just not available mentally, physically, and, and, but we can do something about it. It's, it's really quite simple once you become aware. I love that. Right. And it's, it's so, I mean, you're right that it makes so little difference in the course of your day to spend 30 extra seconds, yes. 20 extra seconds, yes. really focusing on something. But the rewards mm -hmm. it pays are so huge. And I wonder sometimes why like, we get that feeling of not being able to tear yourself away from your inner thoughts or not being able to tear yourself mm -hmm. away from the dishes or the email right. or whatever it is you're focusing yes. on, even for 10, 20, 30 seconds, is it habit? Are we afraid? I mean, what is going on? And I'm sure from your own experiences and then mm -hmm. talking to other women, especially, you probably have gotten a sense of a little bit of that. Oh, yeah. What's happening in our heads that it makes it so hard? Well, and I do think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We, You know, for a long time, I was like, well... You know, I wanted to blame other people like, well, they're expecting me to do this or, well, I have to clean the kitchen before I sit down because I would be a bad mom or a bad wife or whatever. Silly. I think we tell ourselves these things like I can't say no to doing the book fair because all these people are going to be mad at me. Right. But it's like once you do start saying, I don't have to do this right now mm. or you know what? 90% effort is fine. That's going to be just fine. I don't need to kill myself. Or store-bought is fine. I don't need to make homemade. It's amazing once you start realizing you're doing this to yourself. Like this is a choice that you're making. Mm -hmm. And then when you start to free up your time, like I, I would never have been able to write three books and you know, put this message out into the world. If I had continued doing all the things that I thought I was supposed to do, um, doing things out of guilt or, or just to get a pat on the back, like, Oh wow, Rachel pulled that, you know, community service event off really well. And there's nothing wrong with that, but, but I wasn't picking and choosing what was most passionate to my heart. And so then I became resentful and critical and angry and tired and, and then I was no good to anyone. Hmm. So it's like, you know, you can fill your plate to excess and then 
nobody's happy. Right. And you know, I think sometimes it's in, it's easier. And I liked what you said at the beginning about putting the phone in the drawer or something like that. Mm-hmm. I've noticed for myself, um, I tend to be more drawn to my computer screen just because I'm a writer. And so right. I never really, mobile never took off for me <laughs> the way That's good. it has for other people, which is a blessing. I mean, still, yeah. it's still a distraction, but my computer is this like beckoning you know, mm-hmm. magnet that's like always pulling me back. Sure. And I have found that often, you know, if I'm in the kitchen and I've got it open and I'm whatever, sometimes working, sometimes pretending to work, you know how that goes. <laughs> if a kid walks in and wants my attention or needs my attention, I just have to close it and put it away. Because if the screen is open, even if it's open, like in another right. room, it's like yeah. I'm aware that it's open <laughs> and that at any point I could run back over and look at it again. I have to well, close it. And, and the closing probably does, it's like a symbol for you. Like, okay, my work is done for now. You know, it's kind of like, I, I think those little rituals are important. Like you put, like me putting things in the drawer, it was like, okay, th- this, it's not time for this right now. Right. And I do think we have to have those boundaries because technology makes it us accessible to everyone 24 seven. So you really do have to create your own boundaries and like not bringing technology into the bedroom for us is, is a good one because I don't like, you know, we use an old school alarm and it's like when we go into the bedroom, we actually talk because we're not on our phones. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, this is a great place to segue into talking about Only Love today, because I know one thing we talked about, um, you and I just privately, is how different the formats are. You know, your first two books are really memoir. Yes. And this one is more actionable, I guess I would say, Mm -hmm. and more short Mm -hmm. form. So can you talk about kind of how this book is structured and so why it's so easy and so accessible? Only Love Today was created out of a desire to give people a very accessible resource that can literally be opened at any time um, to any page and they could get a very short little burst of encouragement or a burst of direction or hope just just for the struggles of life you know with whether it's distraction or it's pressure or you're wanting to be more authentic I just think there's so many things that we're struggling with and we don't have time to read an entire book so I wanted to just give people little short takeaways that they could use to um, connect more with what truly matters in life. I love that. And I, I'm sure, um, like you said, that there that was a big need because not everyone has a chance to sit down and read a memoir cover to cover, although yes. yours are great and I recommend them highly. Thank um, you. It's a nice entry Thank point you. if someone's not familiar with your work as well. So it's a nice way to just sure. kind of jump in. Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at Vionicshoes.com When you log into your account, that's a one-time use only. Bionic shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. 
They're filled with sugar. They have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them. And I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician approved, super powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. I would love to talk to you. And I actually have been, you know, had have read a few of your most recent blog posts and one of them really got me thinking. And it was the one where you wrote about um, coaching a girl's basketball team. I think it was your daughter's basketball team or was Mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So one Mm -hmm. of the things, I mean, I so that so connected with me because um, I would also cringe if I were asked to (laughs) coach any kind of a team, (laughs) any kind of a sporting team, not really Uh my thing. Um, And I think, you know, when my kids were really little and I was feeling really like a homebody and um, I was feeling really drawn to be kind of in my house, in my kitchen, like available to them as they were around and not to be out very much. And I think that's very natural. And I think um, it's really important to honor that when, especially when your kids are smaller, you have that nesting instinct going on. But one thing I noticed is that Mm -hmm. I said no to so much stuff and it felt great. I just started like not feeling obligated and that felt fantastic, but it's really easy to start saying no to everything. You know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I'm wondering how you decide, like when, how did you decide that that wasn't just an obligation or something you thought you should do because someone else would expect it of you, but like a real important contribution you could make. And I'm sure there's other examples of that in your life. Mm-hmm. Well, so ones that directly impact my relationship with my children, because one of my life goals is to be an active and present participant in my children's lives. And so that really helped me weed out a lot of the extra um, requests that I get. You know, how is this going to impact our relationship? And I knew that showing up and coaching that basketball team with my daughter, she's 10, she would look at me like, wow, this is pretty cool. My mom doesn't know anything about basketball, but she's, she's here because we needed a coach and she wants to be there for me. And I do think that when our kids see us showing up for them, um, I, in my book, Only Love Today, I have a entry called The Art of Showing Up. And um, it was based on my husband's grandfather, and I'll probably get a little choked up, but he, he made a point to come to every one of Scott's bas- uh, sorry, ba- baseball games um, when he was in college. And it didn't matter how far he had to drive. You know, sometimes they were like three and four hours away. But my husband would always look up and there would be his grandpa mm-hmm. and he, you know, it, it just really meant so much to him that his grandpa would show up and unexpectedly. He wouldn't tell him he was coming, but he would just show up. And it was interesting because when my husband told me about this, we had just been married a couple of years and, and I realized that my husband did the same thing. Like he would just, Oh, I hear they need help up at the church and he would just show up or, Hey, my sister and brother are running a race this weekend. Let's go surprise them. And I thought, you know what? That art of showing up that his grandpa did, it, it impacted him so much that he is carrying on that legacy. And so I think anytime we are asked to do something and it is going to reflect as showing up for someone we love, that is something to say yes to. 
That's a great litmus test. And it really does kind of weed out, you know, um, Mm -hmm. one thing I thought a lot about, especially as a mom, is how tempting it is sometimes to make your decisions about how you're going to spend your time based on what someone else might think. And that's like the worst reason to do anything, (laughs) except for if it's your kid, you know, but I mean, if it's like what the other mom down the street might think, that's, that's never the right reason to do something. And um, yet it's, yes, it's sometimes the most tempting. And you, you, and I feel like now that I've become more aware of like, my feelings and my emotions when I'm pondering something like I've tried to really sit with it, you know, and I do have initial reaction to almost everything that comes my way. And usually that initial reaction is like it. Sometimes it's not like I, I, I want to do this. Like I got invited to speak um, to 100 middle schoolers two weeks ago about being an author. And I thought, oh, I'm in the middle of my book launch. Is this is this really a good time? But I knew because my gut was like, you need to do this. You need to do this. And I knew I, I should say yes. And it ended up being an incredibly amazing experience with, um, I did this index card exercise to ask them if they could tell the world. I said, if, if you could tell the world anything, what would you tell them? And their responses blew me away. And so I had initial like uncomfortableness of like, Oh, I don't want to get dressed up. I don't want to have to mm-hmm. practice a speech. And because there's a lot of things we're going to be asked to do that are not going to be easy, but there's a reason why we need to do it. And if you kind of have that feeling like, Hmm, there's something here that I'm supposed to, to do. I'm supposed to go out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, so I really think it's important to think about what was your initial reaction. And then, and sometimes you also have an initial reaction like, Oh, no way. You know, this, (laughs) this is the wrong thing for me, but then you can talk, then you talk yourself into it and then you resent it. Mm Then, Oh, I can't believe I have to do this. And why did I say yes? And so, but I just think it comes with practice. You know, you, it's, it's a, it's a process. You, you kind of are learning as you go. You know, another thing I was thinking of is, and, and it can become overwhelming because as moms, there are so many, it's not, I always joke that it's not like my kid is one day going to say, you know, I've had enough of your attention. Um, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm all I'm set. Full. I'm yeah. full. That's all I need. <laughs> uh, so you, you know, while we're making these decisions, one thing, and it's not always coming from our children. And often, actually, I would say most of the time it's not, it's coming from external right. forces. Um, the school, the paper's coming home and the, and the yes. silly hat day and like the, you know, oh, <laughs> the, yes. the book fair and all this stuff. And, yeah. um, I think sometimes you really have to pay attention to your child a little bit too, to find out what matters to them because it might not be what you think. Oh, right. It, That's such a good point. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes, you know, there's something like I remember well, getting all bent out of shape because I forgot that there was some special, you know, one of those special weeks where the kids have to do something yes. silly every day or whatever. And I didn't realize it was coming. And then here it is like a Sunday night and I'm facing down this, um, <laughs> I'm facing down this gauntlet of five days of stuff. I'm not prepared at all. And I just went and it was tired. I was late. It was late and I was tired. And I went to my son and I said, do you, how, how badly do you want to do this? Just let mom know (laughs) if it's really super important. I will make this happen for you. And he was, I said something like, you know, I really don't care, but could you make cookies for my lunch tomorrow? I mean, he just didn't care. And he, what he wanted from me was so different from what I thought he wanted. And that's, that's so good. And (laughs) and actually something, you know, I do. Well, I think about, um, you know, my, some things that I remember from my maxed out years that I, um, that inspired me to start my journey. I, I, I cringe at, at the way that I reacted and how I treated, especially my eldest daughter. Um, I put so much pressure on her. And one night I decided, you know, I'm so sick of feeling guilty about this. I, you know, cause I just wouldn't let myself you know, be, be forgiven. And so I said, you know, I'm just going to tell her I, I had been in, um, good housekeeping magazine. And the title of the article was, um, how I, how I let go of perfection and stop yelling at my kids. It was, yeah. it, was quite, it was quite the blunt title, but you know, everybody bought like that for like, laying you know, on like famous last words, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, and so I took, I took the article up and I said, Hey, I said, sweetie, you know, she, she was probably eight at the time, you know? So 
I said, hey, um, I just want to apologize because I said, I can remember some really not so great moments when we were trying to get out the door and I wanted you to look a certain way and I brushed your hair so hard that it, you would get tears in your eyes. And I said, I just, I just don't know why I thought that was so important and I'm, I'm so sorry. And, and she said, mom, I just really don't remember you, you being like that. I just remembered that you liked me and Avery to match our clothes, you know? And so <laughs> it was like, I, I felt the weight of the world just come off me. I was like, yeah. because I just remember screaming like a raving lunatic. And yeah. I was so embarrassed and she didn't remember that. She remembered that they, I wanted their clothes to match. And so yes. I was like, Oh, you know, so I think, okay, so how much of this guilt are we putting on ourselves for no reason? Yeah. And then it leads to this all or nothing. Like if I haven't done it right yet, what's the point? You know, my, my child's already right. four or six or 10. I mean, is it yes. too late? And, and that's what I love about only love today, because it's not about the rest of your life. And it's not about the rest of your child's life. Right. And it's not about what happened yesterday or last year or up until now. It's just like today. You can do this. Anything. Yes. It's never yes. too late to change something late. today. And that is what every entry has a daily intention and that you can do daily or weekly or whatever you want. But it basically says today I will whatever. And it's really just focusing on today because that is where you start that that more calm person. It starts with being calm in one moment or or that less a busy person starts with that moment of deciding I'm not going to do all these things or, um, you know, that uh, person who can just be present. It starts with that moment of being present. And so that's what I've I've heard from, you know, the book doesn't come out till March 7th, but I've had a an early reader team, um, a launch team. And that's what I keep hearing is, oh, my goodness, this is so great because it's just today. It is not pressuring to make long-term goals or big improvements. I'm just making very small daily efforts that are really making a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's so refreshing. So that's, you know, I kind of went out on a limb when I did this book differently than my other ones, but it sounds like this is just what people need right now. We have such a negative, um, atmosphere, you know, with yeah. the political climate. And it is, it's all about being positive. It's about being hopeful. And there's, it's actually divided up by seasons of life. Mm -hmm. So that if you are having a particular season, where you're, you know, just really feeling hopeless, you can turn to winter, which is all about holding on. And I, so many people have highlighted a particular passage in winter that that says um you know that sometimes feeling strong or being courageous doesn't look like anything but it is like sometimes doing nothing is what you need to do that sometimes holding on is all you can do and that is okay because we're so caught up in this well I can't feel sad. I got to move on to the next thing or, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, my life is a mess. I need to, you know, get it straightened out. And sometimes the process of waiting and seeing and just processing, that is something significant. And we don't allow ourselves to do that because we think we're slacking off. Mm. Yeah, that is so true. And um, while we are recording this a little bit before your book comes out, by the time it, uh, by the time this episode publishes, it'll be a few days after the seventh. So your book will be available. So okay, if you're listening great. to this now, um, find only love today. It's available mm -hmm. on Amazon and bookstores. Barnes and Noble. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, people can also find you at your blog, Hands Free Mama. Yep. Still. And are you, is there any place else anyone should look or what are you um, active I, on I, Facebook? I'd sure. love, I, yes, I, the, the Facebook community, it's called the hands free revolution is amazing. I, I've just never seen so many supportive people in one yeah. place. <laughs> like if you're, if you're having a bad day and you yell at your kids before you go to the door and you want to share that, it's like, 
you'll have 10 people say, Hey, that was me yesterday. And it's a new day. It's okay. Let it go. So the hands free revolution on Facebook. And I'm also on Instagram, which is a little bit more personal. You know, I like to take photos of my cat. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so, so Instagram is good for that, but that's also the hands free revolution. Okay, great. Well, we'll link to all that. Um, in the show notes and and you'll be able to find this episode is bonus episode 10 at themomhour.com Rachel thank you so much for being on the show again Um, it's just been a pleasure to catch up with you and the new book is fantastic and I just can't wait to see what you come up with in the future Aw, thanks Megan I appreciate it The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi friends, Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Tea's Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Tea's Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Tea's Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Tea's Made.